I'm the only person on this stage who will say that climate is the number one priority for me. Vice President Biden won't say it. Senator Warren won't say it. It's a state of emergency, and I would declare a state of emergency on day one. I would use the emergency powers of the presidency. I know that we have to do this. I've spent a decade fighting and beating oil companies, stopping pipelines, stopping fossil fuel plants, ensuring clean energy across the country. I know that we have to do this. I also know that we can do this. I would make this the number one priority of my foreign policy as well. We can do this and create literally millions of good paying union jobs across this country. I would make sure that my climate policy was led by environmental justice and members of the communities where this society has chosen to put our air and water pollution, which are low income black and brown communities. And when we ask, how are we going to pull this country together? How about this? We take on the biggest challenge in history, we save the world and we do it together. Do you think that would pull America together? I do. Quickly, Vice President Biden, you were name checked there. I'd like to give you a chance yeah, to respond. Yeah, I was. I, I, uh, I think it is the existential threat to humanity. It's the number one issue. And I might add, I, I don't really need kind of a, a lecture from, this, from my friend. Uh, while uh, I was passing the first uh, climate change bill and that Flutifax said was a game changer, while I managed the uh, $90 billion uh, recovery plan, investing more money in infrastructure that related to clean energy than any time we've ever done it. Uh, my friend was uh, um, uh, producing more coal mines and produced more coal around the world, according to the press, than all of Great Britain produces. Now, he's, I, I, I welcome him back into the fold here, and he's been there for a long while. But the idea that we talk about where we started and how we are, let's get this straight. I think it is the existential threat of, of all time. Can I Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Rachel? You may respond, Mr. Steyer. Look. I came to the conclusion over 10 years ago that climate was the absolute problem of our society and was the unintended consequence of our whole country being based on fossil fuels. Everybody in this room has lived in an economy based on fossil fuels, and we all have to come to the same conclusion that I came to over a decade ago. If we're waiting for Congress to pass one of the bills, and I know everybody on this stage cares about this. But Congress has never passed an important climate bill ever. This is a problem which continues to get worse. That's why I'm saying it's a state of emergency. That's why I'm saying it's priority one. If it isn't priority one, it's not going to get done. And this is something where we absolutely have to address it up front. We have to make it the most important thing. And we can use it to rebuild and reimagine what the United States is. We can be the moral leaders of the world again while we clean up our air and water and create millions of good paying jobs. Senator Sanders, I'm going to ask you to jump I was in also here. Tom, named uh, in that. Tom, you stated. You were. You, you <laughs> talked about the need to make climate change a national emergency. I've introduced legislation to just do that. Now, I disagree with the thrust of the original question, because your question has said, what are we going to do in decades? We don't have decades. What the scientists are telling us, we don't get our act together within the next eight or nine years. We're talking about cities all over the world, major cities going underwater. We're talking about increased drought talking about increased extreme weather disturbances. The United Nations is telling us that in the years to come, there are going to be hundreds of millions of climate refugees causing national security issues all over the world. What we have got to do tonight, and I will do as president, is to tell the fossil fuel industry that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. And by the way, the fossil fuel industry is probably criminally liable because they have lied and lied and lied when they had the evidence that their carbon products were destroying the planet. And maybe we should think about prosecuting them as Thank well. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC. Okay, a few things to look at. So Tom Steyer talks about how he'd been fighting climate change for 10 years. Uh, this is an issue that Bernie's been passionate about for his entire career, political career. As soon as the scientists were saying it, 
back in the 80s where he was paying attention. Uh, Joe Biden bringing up that Tom Steyer had been contributing to coal mines in the past. And then he turns around and all of a sudden he's progressive, which that's good for him. That's good that he's uh, trying to fight it now. But the history of a candidate is definitely important. Um, you can see Bernie's hand going up. When Tom talked about moral leaders, and then Bernie was able to, to talk about uh, his ideas a little bit, I wanted to mention as well that Bernie, uh, he, as he mentioned at a different point in the debate, he is the main anti-war candidate. He was against the war in Iraq, he was against the Gulf War. Bernie is anti-war. Uh, he passed that resolution uh, concerning Yemen and Saudi Arabia last year. He was against the Vietnam War when he was younger. Bernie is the moral candidate. Uh, he talks about Israel's treatment of the Palestinians, which is big, because a lot of candidates don't talk about this concept. Uh, for that and many reasons, Bernie, many would say, is the most moral candidate. Uh, as far as Tom Steyer saying, he's the only candidate that will talk about uh, talk about that and make it his main issue. Bernie's talked extensively about climate change. Bernie's main issue is probably campaign finance reform. Bernie understands the link between climate change and campaign finance. Bernie used to talk about the Koch brothers extensively, even though David is now dead. Um, they had an enormous impact on American politics. Their think tanks and their political funding uh, was one of the main reasons why the GOP uh, wouldn't admit that climate change was real for so long. Even now they don't really admit it. There's a few members of the GOP, like uh, Mitt Romney and some others, and that, that may admit it. But there's a huge link between climate change and campaign finance, as well as other problems we have. Uh, problems with our healthcare industry and campaign finance. Uh, problems with shootings in campaign finance. So Bernie making campaign finance his main issue is a winning strategy. It's a winning point. Uh, as well, uh, him talking about going after the fossil fuel industry executives. I'm all for it. Uh, the Koch brothers and their friends uh, ExxonMobil and some of these others, they have gotten involved in our political system. They've funded politicians' campaigns. They've done all these things, and they have negatively impacted the planet. If people are being displaced in the future, if people are suffering immensely because of climate change, I think that we should go after these guys. I think that we should take their money. I think that they should have to do time for the negative impact that they had on society. Understand, even uh, some libertarian writers, uh, Anne Rand, she writes about how if someone uh, negatively impacts you, if someone harms you, you are subject to redress. Uh, I believe it was Milton Friedman even wrote about how in a liber in a conservative society people shouldn't be able to just pollute as much as they want. Which is exactly what the Kochs and others did. Uh, maybe if the Koch brothers are dead, you confiscate their family's wealth. So we don't allow wealth to be passed down that was earned in unjust ways. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be coming out with a lot of other videos on politics and history. Thanks for watching.